two. For the final segment, I wanted to talk about the um, selection of bowl and being able to use that as a reusable insert. So we'll start off with Ngon just drawing our lines and just creating a shape. And we'll just start back with an angle and we'll shift it to live. And then with Alt W, we'll jump over to Hops Tool and I'm just gonna shift click Honeycomb in order to place this in. And with Honeycomb, due to the way it was created, it always requires a little bit of additional placement assistance, but once you get it in, you're able to use the control dots and hold shift in order to add additional counts to it in order to get it to encompass the shape. But another thing that I like to do is press Q and go under mod scroll, which is shift clicking and scrolling through the modifiers until solidify has been brought up and then control clicking to apply, which will apply the modifiers up to that point. And with the solidify active, I can now select this internal ring and just scale it in, which just results in a slightly nicer hex pattern for me. In fact, sometimes I'll even take it a step further and Alt W go back in the box cutter and just perform a cut. And it looks like that cut was non-destructive. So while in edit mode, let's change it over to destructive and perform our cut. And now we have that pattern going across all of our hexes. So why not just continue the idea? And we'll just place a pattern here, perform a little bit of a slide and just make sure we're not destroying things too much with this. You know, we may put just a very small slit here, just with line box. And here's our hex pattern. So the interesting thing with this is that we can press Q, mod scroll backwards, grab this and move this around wherever we want. But even more interestingly, we can just go to kit ops, jump to our pack of, you know, new demo files that we've been working on. And we'll just take this opportunity to choose to create an insert. And first we will mark this as a cutter and make sure it's uh, penetrating the surface. And the next thing is where is our piece that goes on the inside? So we actually want to close the scene and go back to our file. And this thing may not actually be parented the way it's supposed to be. So I will just select them both and choose to create an insert. Sometimes I'm just too cocky with the ability to select all the children. So now we can select both of them, control P, parent them together and just bring this down into the surface, definitely marking it as a cutter, but wondering why it's not showing up as one. There we are. So now that we have a nice flush into the surface, we can actually bring this piece down and even do a reverse boolean on it by control clicking mark in order to just wedge just a little bit more of it back in there and have a better first impression with the surface. While this is being placed, optimally. We also want to control A and set our location just to ensure everything's in order. And we'll take this moment to save this as uh, HT underscore hex, just so we know that this is a hex pattern that we're saving that was courtesy of Hops Tool. And it looks like it also got rid of our modifier or actually disabled it. And now we're being set up for render, albeit a little bit against our will. So we'll choose camera to insert and let's render our thumbnail. I'm pretty sure I'm not in optics at this time. So that means we should be able to render things just fine. We'll just save our insert just to ensure that we're good to go. And, you know, turn it back on the modifier. You know, we also want to make sure that it's definitely on for render. So when we render our thumbnail, we don't accidentally have this not showing up. Just always got to be aware of what our modifiers are telling us right in front of us. So let's take a moment and close this. And now we should be able to go under our new list and find our insert name. We'll just let that pass, but we see that the insert did not work out. So I always enjoy showing a little bit of troubleshooting in videos because it allows me to uh, really get down to the nitty gritty of things with you guys and kind of show how I would personally get in and solve things um, very fast and without a whole lot of further ado, uh, kind of like you see me doing here where I just get everything positioned 
and we go back under the KitOps panel. We just choose a save insert and let's just make a new file. And even though our insert has the wrong name, which I'll be going and dealing with promptly after this video, we just want to make sure that now we're able to place our insert the way it's supposed to. And it looks like it's still giving us the business. So we look at the modifiers, we see if there's no modifier. So let's choose to edit the insert once again. And this thing is definitely marked as a cutter, but we also want to make sure that it's set as a difference. So we save it, make a new file. And I'm pretty sure that what we just ran into was a case of lack of awareness. So here we are dropping in our hex pattern with the best of them. And just like that, you can quickly create a unique hex with hard ops, make it unique, get in kit ops, customize it, and just make it yours and reuse it all over the place. So if we wanted to attempt this a second time, let's say we wanted to put a hex inside of a hex. So I'm going to jump to circle and we're just going to draw our circle, but I'll press control D. We're actually going to jump down our segments to something like six and then we'll shift it to live. And I'm going to select this top face and we're just going to control click it to mark it. And then we'll alt W jump over to hops tool and shift click honeycomb in order to place it inside of the Boolean. And from here we can begin setting up our hex pattern. So of course the Boolean rules apply. So you see me scaling it to just find the magic spot for it because I don't want to deal with the um, added abuse that comes with ex exact at this time. Uh, what I'll do is press Q, shift scroll through mod scroll until I get to solidify. You know, I might also go to decimate, press A to toggle that off and then go to solidify and we can control click to apply that. And we see that we have our internal edge loop as well. Uh, the decimate was getting rid of that, but it's nice to be able to turn that off in the stack. However, I do see that we will need to go back and make sure that we're able to uh, reflect that to the viewer and the user whenever they're working, because I don't see that at this time. But, you know, always pondering things with tools. Uh, while we're at this point, we'll go in box cutter and I'll just choose destructive. And even though we can't see what's going on because everything is so obscured, we're just going to perform this cut and just see what we got. And we see that things did not completely work out for us. More than likely because of something that we did here. And just with a little bit of geometry moving, we're able to get this back on track. But you can see that the mesh itself and the system that we have isn't gonna play very well with the geometry that we have. But it is always nice to get in and just kind of make a unique hex pattern to make it yours, in fact. We could even go a step further where we go in edit mode, snap to this location, shift A, add a plane, scale it down, Q, bevel, press two to make it nice and rounded. We'll delete this edge and we can go from here and just choose to turn it into a curve using curve extract. And we'll also take this moment to convert it to a mesh. Let's just join them together. And now we have these little hooks happening on our hex pattern. So let's um, scroll back through our bulls. So we have our bull in. We want to select this piece. Let's get them both together to transform. However, everything's still parented to the cube thanks to the power of auto parent. So let's bring that down and let's just select these two and we'll press in and we will just jump to our collection, which is new demo and we'll just choose to create an insert. And with create insert, we're already placed where we need to be. We'll just mark this as a difference and just make sure the Boolean modifier is turned on for this. I don't know why the Boolean modifier is suddenly um, working against me, but we will soldier through this. Also, I want to lower the auto smooth at the floor a little bit, or I guess turn off the um, weight at normal in this case. But now we have our insert basically ready for save. So we're just gonna call this um, HT hex two, and we'll just save our insert. And this thing should have been called HT hex. Let's delete this file and we'll right click this and rename it 
and I told you I'll come back for it. Just can't leave these things. HT underscore hex one one, and we'll just click that. Click the plus to append it and save. And from here, we can render our thumbnail without even looking at the scene. I mean, we can look at our scene and see what it looks like. Jump into render and see what our result's going to be. But I already know it's going to be a fairly good result. However, we do probably want to bevel the floor a little bit just to really help it shine in the render because I wasn't seeing it defined enough. So we will go ahead and take this moment to close our scene. And we don't even need this file anymore because I have confidence in the fact that KidOps at this point will show my pattern. Here we are, hex two. And we see that the mesh is barely able to handle this. And let's check this out and troubleshoot this. So this is what we're adding, which we should be able to add that like nothing. All right, just making sure that we're not looking at something that we're not supposed to. So let's add another one. We'll place a hex here. And the question really is, why is it not showing until the very end? Let's add another one and further troubleshoot that. So we'll place it here. And sometimes I weigh in my head how much I want a Boolean to work versus how much work it takes to make it work. And more often than not, I opt for the decision of finding out why it doesn't work because I just got to know. So we're just going to grab this face and pull it out. And we see that that is what's going on here. So let's try it again and we place it here and we see that we're just a little too flush with it. So it's always nice to test your inserts kind of afterwards just to make sure. In fact, this thing is up in the air. And if we look at this, we are so flush with the floor that only exact could solve us now supported in KitOps. But now that we have it placed where it's supposed to be, we can press in, go under KitOps and save our insert. This is just a solid mesh. This one's marked as a difference. We'll save our insert and control N. And ideally, we should be able to place these inserts without any sort of uh, visual buggery because everything that's happening is inside of the cutter and not happening on the mesh. So now we see what we're actually supposed to get. And you also can see a little bit of auto smooth artifacting happening. And I always just hit it with the shift click on the auto smooth to give it some auto smooth in the event that Blender's just not working with the current angle that I'm at at that particular moment. But we see that now we're able to easily get in here and just add reusable hex patterns using KitOps. So with that, I'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time.